I have a new video for you because we are taking a deep dive into the beautiful and tragic life of Anna Nicole Smith. She is a controversial media icon who went through traumatic experiences in the limelight. The public watched this woman self-destruct and allowed others to aid in the process. She was taken far too soon, but Anna will never be forgotten. Today we are going to talk about everything, her childhood, her stardom, and her devastating downfall. So let's go ahead and get into it. If you guys don't know who Anna Nicole Smith is, you are going to learn today. You might look at her and ask, Sloan, wait, hold up, is that Marilyn Monroe? And she would be happy to hear that because when Anna Nicole Smith was asked, how would you want to be remembered? She was quoted saying, I've always wanted to be like Marilyn, but I know I could never, ever be compared to her, but I'm sure gonna try. I just wanna make people smile and be happy. I just want people to love me before I die. And she definitely got her wishes. People love Anna Nicole Smith, but a lot of people don't understand all of the trauma she went through becoming a star. Like her idol Marilyn, Anna had her scandals, her relationship problems, and her issues with substances. But throughout Anna's career, she tried her best to immortalize Marilyn as much as she could. Anna Nicole's house at some point was a shrine of Marilyn Monroe, with photographs from the 50s and paintings all over the walls. What, what uh, made you love her so much? I don't know, we just connect somehow. We have this special bond. It's just like, I don't know, I used to wish she was my mom. <laughs> yeah? Actually, back in 2009, 2010, a bunch of items that Anna collected of Marilyn's were auctioned off. And it turns out that Anna actually had a cookie jar that Marilyn previously owned. She also owned a gown that Marilyn wore to red carpet events. And she also owned several of Marilyn Monroe's personal paintings. So Anna Nicole Smith is pretty much our modern day Marilyn Monroe. But her story is far different from Marilyn's and maybe even darker than Marilyn's because Anna Nicole Smith had a very troubling life. She also was a very goofy character. I mean, she made fun of herself. She was constantly cracking jokes. At one point in 2004, she made up a whole joke that she hooked up with some ghost inside of her house. It happened when she lived in an apartment in Texas and a ghost crawled up her leg and hooked up with her. And it was a whole story that she told. And honestly, the media ate it up. Anything that Anna Nicole Smith did or said was just headlines everywhere. Everyone was prepared to talk about her and had a camera ready to take a picture or a video that will later haunt her for the rest of her being. But Anna is much more than just a public figure or a made-up Marilyn Monroe character because she is a woman with family troubles and all she ever really wanted was a stable household. One of her close friends actually shared this in an interview and it's really sad to hear. Knew of Anna's past and her deep longing for family stability. Anna came to our own family's house for many family dinners, for many holidays, and said, I never had this growing up. You guys will see throughout this video that Anna's mother, Virgie, was a horrible woman to her. And this left Anna with a longing to have a stable household with a family and someone to just protect and love. Every time I hear Anna's name, I think about her son, Daniel, because he was pretty much her sidekick in life. She had him at only 19 years old, and he lived through some of Anna's darkest moments with her. So in this video, I want to start off talking about her son, Daniel, because he was, again, her motivation, her family, and the only person who was always on Anna's side, no matter what. Because even her ex-husbands and family members have turned on Anna at some point, but her son Daniel was always there for her. So Daniel does have a father, and his name is Billy Wayne Smith. 
and Billy actually met Anna when they were working at a restaurant together named Jimmy's Crispy Fried Chicken, crispy with a K, and he was actually a fry cook there and she was a waitress. The couple actually married on April 4th, 1985, and she was only 17 at the time. Then less than a year later, she gave birth to their son, Daniel Wayne Smith, on January 2nd, 1986. Anna has been open with the public that she does everything for her son and I truly believe that her whole entire career and everything she did financially was to provide better for her son because she grew up in conditions that she did not want her son to live in. She wasn't ever really wealthy and her mother never loved her, never loved her like Anna loved her son. I'm, I'm so busy. This, the man in my life is my son because uh, I don't have time and when I have time it's gonna be spent with my son. She also always spoke so highly of her son. It was so nice to watch because she truly was proud of him. She would flex that he was a straight A honor student and that he had been going to classes at Los Angeles Valley College in the summer of 2006. So she was extremely proud of her son and he was her pride and even though Daniel was doing well in school, he was still having his own personal issues. Like I said, he attended school in 2006 at Los Angeles Valley College, but unfortunately that same year he passed away. And I want to go ahead and talk about this moment because I think this is the darkest time in Anna's life and it's truly when Anna lost all motivation just to do anything anymore. It all actually started on September 7th, 2006 because Anna Nicole was in the Bahamas and she just gave birth to her baby girl, Hannah Rose. She was extremely happy to have this baby, but people were concerned about her pregnancy. This is because there was that clown video. You see her binky has crying. and other reports that Anna was struggling with substances. But we'll talk about that video in a little bit because Daniel actually came to the hospital three days after his little sister was born to visit Anna and visit Hannah Rose. On this day, September 10th, 2006, Daniel Smith actually passed away in the hospital room with his mother while visiting his new baby sister. An autopsy found that Daniel actually passed away from a combination of substances, including methadone and antidepressants, and actually a bohemian jury determined that Daniel passed away from an accidental overdose and recommended no criminal charges. I find this part really interesting because, okay, I get it if he did like OD, but there are so many people you will see throughout this video. There are people trying to get a hand at Anna's money, but there's only one person who is in the way, and that is Daniel. But according to her then husband, Howard K. Stern, he claimed that Anna was devastated over her son's passing. Anna and Daniel were inseparable. Daniel was without question the most important person in Anna's life. Stern said this during a testimony at a trial regarding the right to control disposition of Smith's remains. At Daniel's funeral, she supposedly opened up the coffin and tried to climb inside, according to Stern. She said that if Daniel has to be buried, that I want to be buried with him. She was ready to go down with him which is just so heartbreaking to think because if you are a mother out there or if you have a relationship with your mother, you may understand that motherly love. What's Anna Nicole Smith's greatest accomplishment in her life so far? Is, first of all, having my son, and I did have him on purpose. My husband doesn't know this, but I flush my pills down the toilet. And you cannot deny that Anna had a ton of love for her son. All of that love that she's been needing from her own family and from her relationships and everyone taking advantage of her was just built through her and Daniel. And like Howard said, they were inseparable. 
So when he passed away, Anna was pretty much done. But one thing I do want to mention that I think is interesting is that some of you guys may have been like, wait, Sloan, you got um, Anna Nicole Smith's daughter's name wrong because I called her Hannah Rose. Well, actually, Anna initially named her daughter Hannah Rose. But then when Daniel passed away, she actually changed the name one month later on the birth certificate to say Daniel Lynn to honor her son because she missed him so dearly and the Lynn part because Daniel would actually call his mom Mama Lynn. So it was the perfect name for Daniel Lynn and we'll actually talk more about Daniel Lynn and what she's up to today but I want to talk a little bit more about how Daniel was pretty much her ride or die. I mean she went through her career with him and she had quite a life. I love the fact that I take care of my son. You know, I've taken care of him since he was newborn, and that's very important to me. Ain't he cute? He's got blonde hair, green eyes, like mine. Uh, he's beautiful, he's tall, like his mommy. Anna was born Vicki Lynn Hogan, and she is from Texas. She is the only daughter of her father, Donald Hogan, and her mother, Virgie Arthur. She had five half-siblings on her father's side, but Smith was primarily raised by her mother and her aunt. Anna went to school at Durkee Elementary, and then she went to Adeline High, but she wasn't there for long because in ninth grade, she was actually sent to Texas to go live with her aunt. But then by the time she was in 10th grade, she actually dropped out of school. This is when Anna went to go work at Jim's Crispy Fried Chicken. She met Billy there, they fell in love, and then quickly married and had their son, Daniel. But Anna wasn't with Billy for long because by mid-1986, she actually left Billy to go back to her hometown and she took her son Daniel with her. For the next few years, she supported herself and Daniel by working at Walmart, working at a restaurant, and then finally working at an adult dancing club. I don't know if I, can I say strip? Can I say strip on YouTube? I don't even know. But everyone knows Anna Nicole as a, a, a dancer because that's how she became more popular in the scene. Actually, at the club that she worked at, she met her future husband, oil billionaire Howard Marshall II, while she was dancing one night in Houston. At this point, she was still married to Billy. They haven't actually filed the divorce papers, but she was getting closer and closer with Mr. Marshall. They ended up having a two-year-long affair where supposedly Howard Marshall gave Anna tons of gifts and asked her to marry him several times. Once their relationship became more serious, actually Anna went ahead and filed for divorce from Billy in February 1992. After she filed for divorce against Billy, her career took off. It seriously popped off because by March 1992, she debuted on the cover of Playboy. At this point, she was still using her name, Vicki Smith, her birth name, but she was becoming more popular as a model and starting to form her persona as a Marilyn Monroe lookalike. She was so popular in the March edition that she actually became a centerfold in May 1992, which was a huge ordeal back then to be in the center of these magazines, and some women used to aspire to being that woman, and Anna was one of them. Like I said, 1992 was a busy year, and by November, she actually signed a three-year-long contract with Guest Jeans, and she also started coining her new name, Anna Nicole. Anna Nicole Smith, which I think is such a beautiful name for a beautiful person. One year after she debuted as a centerfold for Playboy, she actually was announced in May 1993 as Playmate of the Year, which again was a huge honor back then, even though I do feel like Playboy is a little bit creepy in some ways, and that's a whole nother video. It was great for her career at the time. Playmate of the Year, a very special lady of which we are very, very appropriately proud. Anna? We have a little check here for a hundred thousand dollars. A big check. 
sitting out in front of the, of the house is also a Jaguar XJS a convertible in oyster metallic doe skin. And this is the, the keys for that. Thank you. After she was named Playmate of the Year, she actually got a contract with H&M, a Swedish clothing company, and they had large billboards all over Sweden and Norway with her face on it. She was also all over the magazines. She appeared on the cover of Mary Claire and of GQ that same year. Some of you guys know, once the going goes too well and everything seems great and dandy, there has to be something that comes up and puts a big rock in the road and takes you off track. And that's what exactly happened in November of 1993 because Anna Nicole got in her first scandal involving a nanny who actually claims that Anna Nicole did things to her which are highly inappropriate. Like pretty much SA'd her when she was on a trip in Vegas with Anna Nicole. Actually this nanny quit her job in November 1993 after the incident and she claims that she has suffered from depression and PTSD because of what Anna put her through. So supposedly Anna took her to a hotel in Vegas on a trip took her into a room and forced her into like, you know, getting handsy. And she kissed her, she said no, she didn't like that, but Anna continued. And this left this woman, this nanny, scarred for the rest of her life. So that next year, the nanny actually ended up suing Anna Nicole. So we're in 1994 now and she wanted some justice for what happened. But Anna Nicole called BS and actually countersued this nanny, claiming that she is trying to slander her and try to kidnap her son at some point. I couldn't find too much detail on what actually happened there, but in my opinion, it seems like this nanny was going to sue Anna Nicole and then Anna Nicole just decided to sue her a bunch back to maybe stop her or to, you know, uh, to force a settlement or to intimidate her from actually pursuing charges. But 1994 wasn't all bad for Anna Nicole because she was in her first movie, which was called The Hudsucker Proxy, and she played Zaza, which is a flirtatious celebrity who flirts with the lead character. That film came out in January 1994, and like I said, it was her first time ever being in a movie. But actually, seven days after that movie came out, another movie came out featuring Anna Nicole. It was titled, um, oh my gosh, I can't even say the name of the beginning name, but it's called The Final Insult, 1994. But the beginning, two words I cannot say. Anyways, again, it was released seven days after her initial film debut. And even though these were two decent movies, it never really took her acting career anywhere. As you guys know, Anna Nicole is notorious for having issues with substances. So I do want to give you guys a trigger warning that we're going to be talking about a lot of substance issues in this video. And actually, Anna's problems with substance starts in February 1994. One month after those movies came out, she was actually hospitalized for three days after mixing prescription substances and some drinking. She actually collapsed at the Beverly Hills Hotel and that's when she was hospitalized. So obviously that is very traumatic and this is just one of many times when Anna really had a battle with substances. But her relationship with Howard Marshall, that oil billionaire, wasn't lightening up at all. And they actually got married a couple months later on June 27th, 1994. She was 26 years old and he was 89. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like Sloan. So was she like with him for the money? And a lot of people believe so, but I personally don't. I mean, I believe the money was definitely a factor, but I think that Anna Nicole was longing for just for someone to take care of her, for someone to love her unconditionally and to want her, to want to provide for her. She was missing this. And remember, she was working at Walmart, that restaurant and the club, and she was trying her 
her best to provide for her son. So, I mean, to have a man who is willing to love you unconditionally and provide for both you and your son is an incredible opportunity. And maybe she's an opportunist, but there are so many things that led to this point that I don't think it was all about the money. Because I do believe that this man, even though he was very old, he gave her some type of comfort and something that she was missing in her life. But the money didn't hurt. I mean, you can't admit that the money definitely did not hurt. And actually one year later, exactly one year after they got married, Howard Marshall became seriously ill. And his son, E. Pierce Marshall, who you will hear about throughout this video, was appointed as his father's legal guardian. And once E. Pierce took that role, he made sure to cut off all money going to Anna Nicole because he did not approve of their relationship. And that actually sparked a legal battle between Anna and E. Pierce because he cut her off of her spousal support, which was about $50,000 a month. But keep in mind, at this point, Anna Nicole was used to getting $12 million worth of gifts from this man. I mean, he's a billionaire not a millionaire, a billionaire. So he has a lot of money to give. Eight months after his son was appointed as his legal guardian, Howard Marshall passed away of pneumonia at the age of 90, leaving the spousal support fight unsettled. This was only 13 months after they married, but Anna was still very firm with her stance that age did not matter in their relationship and that she loved him unconditionally. After Howard Marshall's passing, Anna's life did not get any easier. And actually three months later in November, she was hospitalized because she supposedly had an adverse reaction to prescription medicine. Again, I don't really buy that response because it is clear that Anna has had issues with substances, particularly prescription medication, which you guys know is prescribed by a doctor, which is already very problematic. But I found it heartbreaking to see how much coverage there was out there about the substances she was intaking, but nobody thought to go and get her help. So we're gonna report on all the pills that she has been taking, but nobody's gonna step in and actually try to help her. So at this point, Anna is 28 years old. She has recently been widowed and she's got her son to take care of. She doesn't have much money and actually her demons start to catch up with her because by February 1996, she had to file for bankruptcy. This was because of that nanny. Remember that nanny I brought up, the one in Vegas who supposedly Anna did things to? Well, she was winning her case and she was rewarded a settlement of $850,000, almost $1 million. But Anna Nicole could not pay that money, so she had to file for bankruptcy. So right now, Anna is again 28 years old. She has filed for bankruptcy. She's got a kid to take care of. And she's also in a huge court battle with her ex-husband's son over her portion of his estate. And actually this case with the nanny gets looped into it because that money that they want, that $150,000 is also part of the estate that Howard Marshall left over. So all of this legal trouble is starting to drown Anna and she really doesn't have any way out of it. But then Anna gets the win of a lifetime because a California judge rules that she is owed $474 million from E. Pierce Marshall and the Howard Marshall estate. But her luck runs out pretty quickly because a jury in Texas was also deciding on the same situation and they ruled that Anna is not entitled to half of the estate of her late husband and that actually his son is the heir to everything. So we've got a California judge and a Texas jury saying two different things and there are a lot of different pieces involved in this court battle so I will try to summarize it to you guys as best as possible but at some point in Texas actually Anna Nicole had to go and testify and they were trying to make it seem like she was involved with like her husband's passing and actually at some point they tried to convince her to admitting 
to everyone that she would go up to her husband with a recorder and ask him to say that he's going to give her the money or half of the estate while she's not wearing anything because that would convince him to say that and it's really disgusting how they tried to paint her as this woman that she wasn't and really just make her out to be a gold digger. After a little while, you could tell that her demeanor changed. She looked like either she was taking some kind of prescription drugs or something during breaks. Excuse me, what is your name again? I'm sorry. Rusty Harden, who did most of the cross-examination or examination, simply wouldn't let her get away with that. Miss Marshall? You asked that lady right there. Miss Marshall, have you been taking new acting lessons? <laughs> Screw you, Rusty. Now, Ms. Marshall, that's you again telling him what to say, isn't it? And you're sitting by his bedside, and you're holding a handheld tape recorder, right? Yes, sir. Up to him. And you'll talk into the tape recorder, and then you'll say, say so-and-so to him and give it to him, right? She was trying to get him to say something in the recorder in regards to leaving her half of everything. You would take off your top while you sat there next to him and got him to say these things, wouldn't you? Oh, it's a hard Is that day. true or not? If somebody was to pardon me? That is me? not true. Pardon I me? Think you're sick. So Anna's in a tough spot because Texas is ruling one thing, California is ruling another, so they decide to level it up a bit and take it to a United States district judge. He's actually located in LA and he throws away the $474 million judgment that the California judge awarded Anna and he starts his own case. And by March 2002, he actually awards Anna with $88 million of Howard Marshall's oil fortune. But that ruling did not last long because in December 2004, a panel of three judges felt that the $88 million that Anna Nicole Smith was awarded was out of jurisdiction. So they reversed the decision and this actually takes the case to the Supreme Court. Hey Anna, what do you Anna how do you feel? How do you feel? Anna, 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 Anna. Anna. The Supreme Court made a much bigger decision on jurisdictions and the complications with, you know, settling estates out of, you know, out of different states like Texas and California. And the ruling from the Supreme Court actually did not give Anna any portion of her husband's estate, but it gave her the right to pursue half of it. It allowed her the right. So this gives her another chance in court to maybe get some more money or to just get a settlement in general because at this point she hasn't really been given much from that estate. Well Howard Marshall's son E. Pierce Marshall actually passed away in June 2006. So now his wife who has been widowed Elaine Marshall is pursuing the case on behalf of his estate. That following year in 2007 Anna Nicole also passed away so then her daughter Daniel Lynn was actually named as the head of person in behalf of this estate battle. The estate battle actually goes into 2011 when it becomes Stern vs. Marshall and they actually have a Supreme Court rule against Anna's estate ruling that California could not have ever made the decision to award her $475 million because they were in California and the man's estate was in Texas. So after they lost that battle, Anna's team was still fighting back and they wanted $44 million in damages because of all of the battles they have been going through for so long. It took them a couple years to hear back from the courts, but in August 2014, a judge rejected these efforts and the case was finally closed. Oh my gosh, I didn't know if we were ever going to get through those court battles because some of them go right over my head, but it was obviously extremely toxic for Anna and everyone involved because they were back to back at court. I mean, when Anna was alive and involved, she was wearing black when she would go to court. It was something that she dreaded going to and that was very drawn out for so long. So let's take it back a little bit and go back to Anna Nicole's career because in 2002, she was thriving. She actually just got her own television show on the network E and it is titled The Anna Nicole Show, which was a reality series that just followed her through her everyday routine. This show actually achieved the highest cable rating for a reality show and its premiere was on the seventh anniversary of the passing of Howard Marshall. So 
kind of savage. The series attempted to focus on the private life of Anna Nicole, her boyfriend and attorney Howard K. Stern, which I feel like we kind of just went right past that part, but pretty much when she was dealing with all of these court battles, her attorney Howard K. Stern was there to support her and to help her through it. This man ended up becoming her boyfriend, and I feel like it makes sense to me why they started having a relationship. I mean, I definitely believe that Howard K. Stern is an opportunist and that he saw a career out of being with Anna Nicole. He also was very problematic with his enabling of substances and actually at one point injecting her with substances. I mean, she wanted it, but he wanted it even more because he, I'm, in my opinion, wanted to take her out. But we're kind of jumping ahead right here so let's just talk a little bit about the show because it focused on her boyfriend attorney her son daniel smith her assistant kimberly kemi which if you guys watched the show i actually watched it back in the day when i was growing up so i remember all of this doing all of this research for this video has been deja vu the show ended up getting canceled in june 2003 and the last episode premiered on october 2004 but while we're on the topic of, you know, 2002-2003 and weight loss, actually, she had a moment in October 2003 when she was the spokesperson for Trim Spa Diet Pills. Anna actually claimed that these diet pills allowed her to lose 69 pounds, but Trim Spa ended up getting sued and Anna Nicole was wrapped into it because people claimed that this product wasn't actually helping them lose weight. The pill was false and misleading, and they actually had a pay $1.5 million to settle everything with all of those trying to sue them. But 2003 wasn't all bad because Anna actually came out with a film that year. It's titled Wasabi Tuna and pretty much in this film she played an over-the-top version of herself whose miniature poodle Sugar Pie is stolen from her on Halloween by a team of drag queens dressed like her. Neither the film nor her performance drew any positive reviews views which honestly that movie sounds crazy I need to watch it but honestly it's probably too ahead of her time because drag queens back in 2003 like that just doesn't sound okay back then I mean of course there were drag queens there but you guys know the times weren't as accepting there wasn't the RuPaul show for others to you know watch and learn what drag queens were just hand over the pooch Lucy Lou uh, uh, Charlie's angel yeah. strike a pose get him oh. Oh. this is not pretty Anyways, even though 2003 was looking up for Anna, she was still having issues with substances. And I actually believe that it really, really started to take off in 2004, because in April, she actually started getting treated by this doctor named Kapoor. He actually took over the practice that Anna was already going to, and then he started treating Anna. She was primarily seeing this doctor to treat her pain, but she was also supposed supposedly suffering with psychiatric illnesses, and her doctor was, quote, trying to keep a lid on it with methadone, which is an extremely crazy, like, substance that nobody should really be prescribed. I mean, I don't know that much about, like, um, substances, but this one is the type to get you addicted. That's what I do know. Her issues with prescription started really picking up because that same year in May, on May 27th, she had a jet ski accident during Memorial Day weekend where she ended up breaking some ribs. So she actually asked her doctor for one of the most powerful painkillers ever. It's called Dialude which hopefully I'm saying that correctly, but this one is something that you want to stay away from. So Anna fractured two ribs and this Dr. Kapoor prescribed large amounts of Dialude, which is the strongest opioid available. This type of substance is again very addicting and it can stop people from breathing because it really, really slows you down. But get this guys, this Dr. Kapoor, who will be criminally charged later in this video, he actually never saw Anna's ribs when he started treating them. So she got into this accident with this jet ski and she wasn't near her doctor. So she went to another doctor to, um, you know, to get x-rays and such. Well, that doctor never talked to Dr. Kapoor. Dr. Kapoor saw Anna, never did an x-ray, never spoke to the doctor that treated her during that accident and just decided to give her heavy, heavy doses of Dialude. This all might explain why she had such a hard time in December at the Billboard Music Awards when announcing Kanye West 
to the stage because she came up on stage and she was slurring her words and a lot of people can agree that Anna Nicole was not okay in this moment, but the world just sat there and watched. Like my body. I was honored to be on our next performer's new video. That was such a horrible moment for Anna Nicole because it will forever haunt her and so many people ended up asking her about it. Not on drugs. I didn't have one cocktail. I was a little bit shaky. I was nervous. Uh, but after the awards, I was completely fine. Um, you know, after I did the show, I was fine. Uh, everything was fine. I, I took pictures. I did interviews afterwards. I was out on the tractor, I took tons of pictures, I was happy, <laughs> woo! <laughs> Later on, one of her bodyguards actually writes a book, a tell-all book, and he claims that he had to hold her up behind stage to like get her onto the stage to make that announcement. And she actually heard this rumor and she clarified and said that it was because of wiring and such. That you couldn't stand on your own. Not true. There was a bunch of wires backstage and my bodyguard helped me get across the wires. It was really dark. Bodyguards do that. They help you get across the wires and get you off stage. So that was a bad moment for Anna Nicole. But like her life, it just goes through waves. And she had an up wave in 2005 because she was praised for her involvement with PETA. She actually did a campaign where she had some men around her and she said that these men prefer women who do not have fur. It was a great move for animal activists and so many people praised her, especially PETA. They actually have a beautiful biography on their page dedicated to her and I really appreciate that they did that. Something that probably isn't as appreciated was Anna's stunt back in 2005 in March at the MTV Australian Video Music Awards. And pretty much, let me take you back to the time. So it's 2005, actually in February, there was just the Super Bowl with Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson. And you guys know how that went down. Well, Anna actually ended up doing a stunt on the red carpet with a wardrobe malfunction where her, you know, her top completely came off. And uh, that was just to kind of poke fun at Janet Jackson and what happened there. A lot of people did not really like how she did that. They didn't really think that it was tasteful. But keep in mind, guys, that Anna Nicole definitely had some mental health issues. And I feel like some of the wrong things she did in her life it's not explained away by her mental health issues, but if you understand how bad they were, then you might have a little bit of sympathy for what she was going through. I mean, in April 2006, there was a psychiatrist who claimed that they met with Anna Nicole and that she diagnosed Anna Nicole with borderline personality disorder. I don't know if I can trust that psychiatrist, but it was pretty much the only diagnosis I found on Anna Nicole that was by someone who is reputable. And I mean, if she had borderline personality, maybe that would contribute to some of the things that she did, you know, during her time. Even though there was so much talk about Anna's mental health issues and her substance problems, she was still living her life. And then in April 2006, rumors started circulating that Anna could possibly be pregnant. So she actually posted a video on her website announcing that she was pregnant. The title of this video said, let me stop all of the rumors. She is seen in the pool with a floaty and this is when she announces that she is pregnant with her baby girl. Hi, it's me, Anna Nicole, as you can see. I've been hearing a lot of gossip in the papers. Is Anna pregnant? She's pregnant. She's pregnant by some guy. Well, let me stop all the rumors. Yes, I am pregnant. I, uh, I'm happy. I'm 
very, very happy about it. Um, everything's going really, really good. And um, I'll be checking in and out periodically on the web. And um, I'll let you see me as I'm growing. So that's it at this time. Even though Anna seemed pretty happy in that announcement, she was still really, really dealing with a bunch of issues. And one of those issues involves her issues with substances. And I feel like that's something that never really got away from Anna. She never really got better. And she was always struggling with this. I mean, I feel like her life would have been so much more different if she was able to get proper help and had people around her who wanted to see her better. But people like Howard K. Stern and her own mother really could care less less. On August 12, 2006, there was a video that was released by the LA Superior Court that shows Anna Nicole at her home in the Bahamas with her face painted like a clown. In this video, this young girl named Riley is actually having a birthday party and she is spending some time with Anna as Howard K. Stern filmed the video. I feel like he was filming this as blackmail and to make her look bad, but at the end of the day, the LA Superior Court actually released it. During this video, nine-year-old Riley voices concerns that she believes that Anna might have brain trouble. She has major brain trouble. Get the screwdriver. For the baby? Yes, take one battery out to prove that. That's not a real baby. And Anna actually says at one point that she's not actually pregnant, that she just has gas. The baby's over there sleeping. That's Your other one of your baby. Your baby down there. Your baby down there. That one. I think I just have a little gas. And to be honest, this video is very, very hard to watch and it makes me sick to think that like he even filmed it in the first place, but it shows that Anna was definitely pregnant and she was on something at some point. And I think that Howard K. Stern was very involved with giving her that medication to make her act like this. So only one month after that horrific video was released to the public, Anna Nicole gave birth to her baby girl, Hannah Rose, who will be later named Daniel Lynn to honor her older brother. Like I was telling you guys earlier, unfortunately Daniel went to go visit his baby sister three days after she was born and that's when he passed away in that hospital room. That was a very, very hard moment for Anna like we talked about in the beginning of this video. I was sedated, I'll tell you that. The doctors had me sedated, it was, it was tough and it was bad. My son died. So she, she left so a I message. my mother. And all, all I could say was, Daniel's dead. Daniel's dead. But at the same time, there was so much going on in her life, and the media was going crazy. I mean, Howard K. Stern was out here speaking to the press on September 26, 2006, about 19 days after Daniel Lynn was born, and he claims that he is the father of Daniel Lynn. The following day, an ex-boyfriend of Anna's, photographer Larry Burkhead, claims that he's actually the real father. Because Larry was speaking out claiming that he's the father, Howard K. Stern thought it would be a great idea to go on Larry King Live on September 27, 2006, 20 days after this child was born, and claim that he has in fact been in a relationship for a very long time with Anna, and that due to the pregnancy, he was confident that he was was the father. Howard actually ended up signing the birth certificate in the Bahamas for Daniel Lynn because he was so certain that he was the dad. The day after he went on Larry King Live, he actually got married to Anna Nicole. They were married in the Bahamas, but it was not a legally binding ceremony. So they weren't technically married, but they kind of were married, and they took pictures that were later sold for one million dollars. At this point, I know that Anna was not in the right mindset because her son passed away 10 days before she got married. She just had this child. She has been caught on multiple substances, and you know, she's out in public slurring her words. The videos aren't looking good. They had the clown scandal. There is just so much adding on to her. I cannot imagine being her at this time because it feels
feels like the world is just collapsing. So they get married and October goes by and everything is just fine until November 2006. On the 1st, she was actually entered into the hospital in the Bahamas for a collapsed lung and pneumonia. It was never clear how she collapsed her lung or how she caught pneumonia, but people were so focused on tearing her down. Actually, TMZ, one week after she got out of the hospital, wrote an article about Anna Nicole and her home in the Bahamas, claiming that the lights aren't on because she isn't paying money for it, the friend that supposedly allowed her to stay there doesn't want her to be there, and they call her out for having no electricity. She actually addressed the rumors in an interview with Howard, and it's weird to see how certain Howard is that people are out there to go and get them and try to ruin their names and their reputations, and that this scandal with the electricity is just one in a bunch. They're Anna Nicole exclusive. The eviction rumors with her baby girl and the house tour you haven't yet seen. It's a brand new side of Anna, and it's only on ET. Someone is trying to evict me, but um, I own this house, and um, I'm just going to let the courts handle it. We have the documents that show she owns the house. It's going to come out in court. You know, what I think is going on is people put things out there in the media even before they file it in court, and what they're trying to do is make us look bad, make her look bad, more, more even make me look bad. But the homeowner of that Bahamas estate did not want Anna to be living there any longer. He actually went to the press and claimed that he did not give her the mansion like she claims, and that this man, Ben Thompson, wants his place back. He claims that she was failing to pay him and that he was trying to regain control of the property. Property. Anna was supposed to go and attend an eviction hearing on November 28, 2006, but she never showed up. That takes us to December 2006. It is holiday time. Christmas is just around the corner. Um, 2006 MySpace days. Was MySpace a thing back then? I don't even know. But it was a simpler time back then. But for Anna, it was far from simple. So many men were claiming to be the father of her daughter that actually the LA Superior Court rules that Anna must bring her daughter, Daniel Lynn, to California for a paternity test. Thankfully, the ruling was actually temporarily blocked and the question was pending. So the courts weren't in any rush to actually figure out who Daniel Lynn's father was. But Anna Nicole at the same time was really going through it as a mother, as a human, as a person. She was physically in so much pain for whatever reason. I mean, I think at this point she just had zero pain tolerance because she has been put on opioids for so long that she just doesn't even register pain the same way anymore. But on February 7, 2007, Anna Nicole takes a trip to Fort Lauderdale to buy a boat that she's been wanting to take back to the Bahamas. This was actually her first time leaving the Bahamas after her son passed away and she was going to Fort Lauderdale to secure a luxury yacht. Anna was planning on keeping her trip very, very short. She wanted to get into Florida and out because she left her daughter back in the Bahamas and she didn't want to leave her for long. But unfortunately, the next day, February 8th, 2007, Anna Nicole was found passed away in her hotel room. She was in room 607 at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. According to the police, at 1.38 p.m., Anna's bodyguard, Mo, who was also a trained paramedic, called the hotel's front desk from the sixth floor. The employee at the front desk then told hotel security to call the police. At 1.45, the bodyguard, Mo, administered CPR until the paramedics arrived. But by 2.10 p.m., Anna Nicole was rushed to Memorial Regional Hospital where she was pronounced passed away on the scene at 2.49 p.m. Supposedly up to this point, Anna was really not feeling well. She had a 105 degree temperature, but she did not want to go to the hospital because she did not want all the paparazzi to be nosy and, you know, making stories on her health. But supposedly Anna had an intestinal infection that caused her to fall in her hotel room, in her bathroom tub, and hit her head really hard. She got a concussion. This on top of all of the medicines she has been taking for five months 
months, which include sleep medication, Valium, antidepressants, and more, just all contributed to her becoming unconscious and passing away. She was 39 years old and she left everything to her son, Daniel. She actually wrote her will back in 2001 and she wrote it in a way to exclusively make Daniel the sole beneficiary of her estate. She actually wrote in paper to exclude any other children from her estate. So if, if she had any children after the date of 2001, she wasn't planning on giving them anything. That's why Daniel is her ride or die. But her boyfriend or husband or whatever he was at the time, Howard K. Stern, was actually the executor of the estate. So he is now in charge with what to do with the money now that Anna is gone and Daniel is conveniently gone. After Anna passed away, it was a firestorm and everyone wanted to be Danielle Lynn's dad because she is going to get the estate if you know everything in court works out correctly. On February 9th, one day after she passed away, this man Frederick actually came forward and claimed that he had a decade long affair with Anna and he could potentially be the father. At the same time, this other guy, Alexander Denk, a former bodyguard for Anna, told the tabloid television program Extra that he also had an affair with her and he could be the father. So at this point, we have four people who claim to be the father. Howard K. Stern, uh, Larry, we've got this man, Alex, and then we've got this dude, Frederick. So all these men claim to be Danielle Lynn's father. So on February 11th, 2007, a judge actually orders a DNA test to go down. They asked for an emergency sample of Anna Nicole's DNA so that they could run these tests, but that sample was denied, so the test was pushed off. On that same day, TMZ released an article, now three days after Anna passed away, and it's a picture of her fridge in the room she was staying in Florida. This fridge supposedly had a bunch of substances in it, and probably the substances that contributed to Anna passing away. But of course TMZ took it and made a mockery of her, and just that was what they put out there, like, during her death. It's just so insanely insensitive. Less than a month after her passing, she was laid to rest in the Bahamas. Actually, her mother was extremely disrespectful at her funeral. She wore a flower that Anna specifically did not like. They made these special pink and black ribbons for guests to commemorate Anna Nicole. You can see Howard K. Stern pinned one on his dark suit. If you notice, Virgie didn't put one on. And she was offered. Patrick and Paul also say the flowers Virgie carried showed how estranged she was from her daughter. She brought pink carnations and Anna hated carnations. She was also very adamant about having Anna buried back in Texas, but Anna did not want that. She wanted to be in the Bahamas. I honestly don't think that Anna Nicole's mother ever truly cared about what Anna wanted or her wishes. I mean, this woman seemed very bitter and just really cared about her own reputation. Later on in May 2008, she actually ended up filing a lawsuit against TMZ, CBS, and a Texas blogger named Lindell Harrington because she claimed that these people were conspiring to ruin her reputation and take away her ability to seek custody and visitation of her granddaughter. That blogger I just mentioned, that woman named Lindell, actually ended up going to prison over this lawsuit because she failed to turn in her laptop, which was considered evidence in this case. So she supposedly, allegedly staged a break-in where she had someone come in and steal that laptop away. But honestly, I think she was happy going to prison because she stayed in prison during Memorial Day weekend 2008, which was probably not fun. But at this point, she was so exhausted from the lawsuit, she could not financially support it anymore. She did not want to fight. She felt like her, her work was her opinions on this woman. And actually the judge ended up throwing the case out when it came to TMZ and CBS and probably when it came to Lindell. But because she, you know, got rid of that laptop and the evidence was taken away, she was criminally charged and put into prison. But let's go back to Anna's death because there are still so many unresolved issues. So in March 2007, actually a medical exam examiner in Florida says that Anna Nicole's passing was an accidental overdose and he claims that methadone, Valium, and a sedative were among at least nine medications in her system. Two infections also contributed to her death. 
Please say there is no indication of foul play. Even though at this point they claimed there was no foul play, there was later an investigation and some people were charged. But before we talk a little bit about those charges, let's talk about what's going on with this child, Daniel Lynn, and her DNA. Because this photographer and former boyfriend, Larry Burkhead, is very, very certain that he is the father of Anna's daughter, Daniel Lynn Hope. But in April 2007, the results were made public following a court hearing in the Bahamas. They announced that Larry Burkhead was actually the father of Daniel Lynn, and Howard K. Stern said that he will no longer try to challenge, you know, Larry when it comes to custody of the child. He pretty much gave up and said, okay, well then take her if she's yours. A lot of people wondered why Anna Nicole had got pregnant with this photographer rather than, you know, her boyfriend slash like husband, Howard K. Stern. And there are several reasons out there, but actually her bodyguard, Mo, who does a bunch of talking, did an interview and he claims the reason why Anna Nicole chose Larry as the biological father was because his DNA was really good and she wanted a um, beautiful kid because she would never be with someone so broke or poor like him. She liked wealthy men and he was just good for his DNA. Big Mo takes aim at Danny Lynn's father, Larry Burkett. <laughs> figured, oh, my child would look great. Blonde hair, blue eyes, you know, go great with me, and my baby would come out beautiful. So basically, if I get this right, from what she told you and what you're telling me, is that Anna looked at Larry as a sperm donor to get a really beautiful child. That's it. First of all, she liked men that was wealthy. I mean, that's no secret. Now, Big Mo claims Larry Burkhead's finances as a photographer were not up to the standard that Anna Nicole was looking for in a mate. Again, I don't know how I feel about this Mo guy. I feel like he doesn't have the best intentions because he's released books, he's done so much press, and I feel like Anna Nicole would not have approved of any of that. As for criminal charges, those were brought up in March 2009 because Howard K. Stern was actually charged with six felonies involving Anna's overdose. Two of the doctors that were treating Anna also were given six felonies each. So the police charged a bunch of people with her death and that opens up an investigation. That bodyguard that we keep talking about, Mo, he talks a lot and he actually said on October 14th, 2009, that he saw Howard K. Stern inject Anna Nicole with her medication at least five times. Her bodyguard testified Wednesday. He says he saw Howard K. Stern inject the former playmate with a powerful sedative shortly before her death and several times in the weeks before that. And I have no doubt in my mind that this man, Howard K. Stern, was working with maybe other people to help get Anna past the line of, you know, passing away so that they could get control over this fortune and do whatever they wanted to with it. I mean, before Anna Nicole, Howard K. Stern was just a basic attorney. He really had nothing going for him besides his late law career. And after being with her, he just got so much money off of that situation, off of doing press and just being known as her partner. But the criminal case comes to an end on October 28, 2010. More than three years after Anna passed away, her psychiatrist and her boyfriend were found guilty on some counts at trial, alleging to conspire to prescribe prescriptions to Anna, even though she well knowingly had an addiction problem. But Anna's doctor, Dr. Kapoor, who we've been talking about since like, what, 2004? He was acquitted of all charges. There was also resolution when it comes to Anna Nicole State, Daniel Lynn's father, Larry, and Anna Nicole Smith's ex, Howard K. Stern, are actually the two who are in charge of this estate, and they are both co-trustees of the account. So I don't know if they like each other or not because they had the whole DNA situation, but they both manage this money that will later go to Daniel Lynn. I feel like this video would not be right if we did not update on what's going on with Daniel Lynn. So pretty much, she is 14 years old right now and she has actually been doing some press in the last few years where she has spoken out about you know being Anna Nicole's daughter. I do feel like it's kind of weird that she has been pushed out to the media and that she has done so many interviews and such but it seems like it's providing money for the family. I mean I say that because her father Larry Burkhead he has done so much 
press. I mean, I've seen him on Wendy Williams. I've seen him do documentaries. I mean, this guy was a photographer before he was with Anna Nicole. And after being with Anna Nicole, he is just known as Anna Nicole's ex slash baby daddy because there's really nothing else going for him. I mean, I'm sure he does photography still, but this guy has just pushed his relationship with Anna Nicole to the edge because he continues to do media tours on their relationship and about his daughter. I mean, his whole Instagram is just Larry and Danielle Lynn, and he posts about both of them. Thankfully, he's not trying to make his daughter some social media star or to follow in her mother's footsteps, but I do find it kind of odd that he just continues to make press and to do interviews and to talk about Anna after she's been gone for so long. I feel like Danielle Lynn must have a weird just like concept of her mother because of how obsessive her father has been and how really her whole identity is just defined by her mother's career. Her mother that she only knew for, you know, a, a small portion of her life. As for Howard K. Stern, it seems like he's been pretty quiet and just probably sitting on his pile of money that he earned off of this situation. Anna Nicole's mom actually passed away not too long ago and her father passed away a little before that. So she doesn't really have too much family laying around besides Danielle Lynn and Larry, which isn't really even her family. I mean, they were just boyfriend and girlfriend at some point. So I really don't like how that guy just continues to like get clout off of this situation. But Anna Nicole will forever be a United States media treasure. I mean, she was our Marilyn Monroe of our time. And the jokes that she told the funny skits, her television show, there is just so much happiness and goofiness here even though the darkness sometimes covered all of that and maybe that's what we remember. I still cherish that happy Anna Nicole who really didn't care what she said or who was listening but she was going to be herself no matter what. <laughs> C-O-L-E So who would have thought a girl could make it from selling chicken To being one of America's best finger licking Cover of Playboys where you got the start And when you got the part, you took America's heart Only if old Marshall could see the fallout How her son tried to take the money and ball out But just like me, she was hard to tame She made it out of the strip club Depression fame Yeah, you know who, Anna Nicole's the name The blonde bombshell, her breast double XL In every magazine she did, did sell And everything she did, she did, did well Life after life She was dead up in Maryland yeah. Road Would have been proud, you probably would have now Left up in the clouds, looking down at a child Like, what a beautiful baby And all because of you should be a fortunate lady And all because of you, the paparazzi's crazy Trying to get a shot of a billion dollar baby Life after life
learn a lesson. Shout out the pain. N C O L E. A N N A N I C O L E.